Miss C here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you know if I have a new video. So, guys, it has been two weeks since I posted my last video. And two weeks? God damn. Shut up. So I just want to say. Suspend you? What? I said, what YouTube did suspend you? But anyways, all I'm saying, I apologize. It was like a lot of stuff going on. I got like food poisoning twice. One kind of was somebody's fault. I'm not going to say no names. And then uh, school, like I had food poisoning twice. And I had to go to school stuff and all that stuff. So time got away from me. And yeah, that's why I'm back now. So I apologize for being away for so long. So I just wanted to do like an update about my life. And now I'm going to talk about school for a little bit and all that good stuff. So, I have been very good. Uh, last video you guys seen, I was car shopping. And I ended up choosing the Malibu. And I love my car. It's everything that I need. It's a perfect size. Everything is, like, amazing. Uh, let's see. School is going good. School is, uh, school is better. A lot better than the last semester. I, I'm definitely going to say that. Like, school, you have to, make, you have to put your time for and for school and like if you don't study or if you don't pay attention in class or if you don't put the effort and the time in like your grades are going to show it so today i'm here to talk about like college tips that i've learned so far and that work for me as well as just like the process of applying for college and all that good stuff because i know that it can be very confusing for people who don't know how to do it or if it's your first time all that good stuff so let's just talk about like the process of applying for college. So I recommend applying for like three colleges so that way you have like your main priority college and you have like backups just in case you know everything doesn't go right with your first college. So it's important to like keep backup plans in mind like make sure you, you don't just set yourself on one place and one place only because Colleges are hard to get into now, and the requirements are kind of hard now. So just make sure you always keep a bag up. Uh, let's see. Another thing is like to make sure, make sure you keep all the deadlines like in your mind or like write them down or something because in college deadlines are like deadlines. In high school, you know, you can like turn in late or do this late. It's fine, but in college or applying for college, deadlines are final. So if you miss the deadline, then you're like you know, on your own. So that's very important. Also, FAFSA is very important as well. You know, just always apply for that because you never know what extra money that you can get because college can be very expensive and extra money is always good. So make sure you do your FAFSA early as possible. Try to do it like the day that it opens. Usually it opens like in October. So do it like fast as you can because you have a better chance of getting more money the early that you do it because everyone in the you know United States or whatever all use that same thing it's a better like funded college fund for college students so make sure that you do that early as possible I think it opens like the very first October like October 6 or something that's usually when it opens that's what it opened for me like last year so make sure you do that as soon as possible also when you when you're doing your FAFSA, make sure that you like don't put any information in incorrectly because it can stop your process of getting accepted and you'll have to like prove stuff like getting your parents like tax return or crazy stuff like that and then they'll prolong your process of getting accepted. So that's very important. Make sure that you're putting the schools that you're applying for, put that on your FAFSA application because that way when you get approved or get accepted to your school, your FAFSA follows you to that school, to that financial aid office, so that way, when it's time to get your money back, it goes to the right school. Let's see. Uh, okay, so, as far as like applying for college, some colleges require you to do an essay. I recommend using Grammarly and also getting someone to like look at your essay for you because those essays basically just like showcase who you are and basically, in those essays, it's good to just talk about yourself because that's what they basically want to know. They want to know who you are, what you're about, and like what can you bring to their college. So it's almost like an interview for college. So college essays can be a part of your college application. It just depends. Another thing I want to talk about is making sure that like you don't 
just force yourself to go somewhere that someone else wants you to go. Make sure you're going somewhere that you want to go to because you're going to college for you, not someone else. So make sure you go where your heart tells you to go. Uh, also, I wanted to say, like, there's nothing wrong with staying home because some people are going to tell you, oh, go off to college or go away, all that stuff. But believe me, staying home saves you a lot of money and it's sometimes better for you because if you stay home and go to like a community college, you can do your first two years there. And once you get your associate's degree, any college in that state has to accept you. So let's say you want to get into like University of like Alabama or something. If you just go to a community college in Alabama, do your first two years, get your associate's degree, and then transfer to University of Alabama, they have to accept you because you already have a degree. So just a little information because it's like, you know, not bad to stay home because sometimes it's better for your situation. But if you can go off, go off. It's basically just like based on your situation and what's better for you. I stay home personally and I'm happy that I stayed home. And everyone I talk to that didn't stay home, they're like kind of stressed out. So just keep that in mind. Also, really? What? I'm stretching. You don't stretch like that. Come on, man. That's not good. You do not. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so, I do like advise you to get a planner because whenever you go to class, you're going to get dates for your exams or sometimes you and your classmates might do like a study group and it's just good to keep something to keep all those dates in so I have me a planner it says grand plans on it this planner goes from August 2019 to December 2020 so planners are really nice it just gets you more organized so I recommend getting a planner 100% because last semester I didn't have a planner and this semester I do and it actually has helped me with keeping up with stuff and not forgetting things so in my planner it has like little tabs on the side for all the months and then you just like go to that month and then when you go to the month it has like goals a section for goals a section for like to do all that good stuff let me see if you guys can see it but yeah, it has a section for like everything. So I recommend getting a planner. These are, they're very helpful. It helps me stay organized and it helps me just keep up with everything because if you put something in your phone, for a while you gotta remember where you put it in your phone. And then if you don't check that part of your phone, then you just forget what you put down. So get a planner, oh my gosh. And they're not even that expensive, they're like $10. You can even find one for like $5, but the good ones are like $10. So it even has like holidays on the back so you can go ahead and plan stuff out ahead of time. So this one I actually got from Marshalls. Uh, I think the best place to get planners are like the department stores like Marshalls, Ross, places like that because when you go up like by the checkout they have like planners, coffee mugs, all that good stuff. So 10 out of 10 recommend getting you a planner. Okay so let's talk about like my tips as far as keeping like a good grade in college so okay I take all of my notes on my computer except for my class and the reason I do that is because last semester I tried to write all of my notes for all my classes and it was very difficult for me to keep up with the teacher because for certain classes like anatomy anatomy lab you're going to talk about a lot of stuff in one class so you got to keep up so when I, when I was writing I would like have to raise or stop or whatever but I type I type a lot that I type a lot faster than I write so I recommend trying to type your notes far as just for some classes now for math class you have to write out problems and stuff so that's like kind of impossible so I just use like a basic like notebook just a basic notebook that's like maybe like a dollar or two and then I just write down don't judge my handwriting I just write down my math equations and all that stuff in here so this is my math notebook but everything else I use my laptop with I'm gonna show you guys what I use okay so for my anatomy class anatomy lab class I like to use OneNote and the reason I use OneNote because it almost like organizes your stuff like you're using a notebook so I have my different classes right here anatomy and anatomy lab so there is anatomy right there and then this is we're gonna click I separate my stuff by the dates 
of a class so that way I can remember like okay what did we talk about on the 16th which was like a Tuesday I go back and I see everything that we talked about and as you can see I take a lot of very a lot of notes I'm very detailed with my notes because I know that last semester I did not do so well so I'm trying to do a lot better now so that is what I do for my notes and then, yeah you can highlight on here you can do a lot of different little stuff and then you just I like how like you can just section it off and then if you need to do a different class you just like add a section underneath it and then you're good and you can also highlight on here I was reminding myself to check YouTube to watch some PowerPoints um, not PowerPoints to watch some videos that my teacher uploaded for us to study so this is what I do to take my anatomy notes and my anatomy lab notes so that's what I do for that See, as far as writing essays, I recommend using Grammarly. I use Grammarly for essays, sometimes important emails I write, I like to use Grammarly because it catches like little slip ups that you might make far as using like a comma in the wrong spot or just, you know, basic English stuff that you might forget or misuse, all that good stuff. So I use Grammarly. They have a free version and they also have a paid version. The paid version, it just goes deeper in detail, but the free version, it gets you like it gets you a good grade and all that stuff so i use a free version another thing that i recommend doing is doing flashcards especially for like learning the terms because anatomy you learn like the body from like head to toe you learn the bones the muscles the systems you learn a lot of different things so i recommend using flashcards and you could just use like just some cheap white flashcards and just like write the term on the front write the definition on the back and even maybe like do a picture on it and then that way you can familiarize yourself with the picture and then the term and the definition and when it comes to studying it's really good to like revisit the like the term or whatever you're doing multiple times because then that way your mind like remembers seeing it and remember you doing it so repetition is very important while you're studying uh let's see another thing is like reaching out to your classmates and try to like do a study group I haven't done that yet because like like you go to class and get out and you just go but someone brought it up before I did so we're gonna see how that goes but yeah study groups are nice because all of you guys come together with like different ideas and different ways to look at stuff and then you contribute to it and all of you guys are bouncing ideas off of each other and then like you guys are teaching each other how to do things because sometimes the way the teacher explains it might not make sense and you guys can just learn it together so study groups is something that I'm going to also be trying very soon and I probably recommend trying that as well uh I don't have anything else to say <laughs> so I think that's pretty much it as far as my advice and tips on applying for college as well as maintaining a good grade in college that's probably it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As you can see, I am not at home. We are in Houston right now, and we have a very, very live vlog on the way. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys next week.